Welcome to the Holland Financial Report. It's October 27th, 2021, and I am still David Holland. I'm glad to bring you a conversation with our Vice President of Investments, Robert Mara, to talk with you about investing in municipal bonds and looking at where interest rates are going and inflation and possible tax increases. What say you, Robert? Well, we're talking about municipal bonds this week. So um, a lot of people have a question in terms of uh, if an infrastructure package passes Congress um, and not only the $1 trillion one, but the additional one, regardless of what that amount would be, um, what would the impact be on municipalities and cities and states that issue these tax-free municipal bonds? Because they're going to get money. Because they're going to get money. And now, for the record, most likely it won't have a direct impact on the existing municipal bonds. The states and cities, they're going to spend that money, okay? But right, right. let's say they actually pay off some of those municipal bonds. What are the effects of those? What is the effect of that? Well, the direct effect, since interest rates have been going down and are now close to zero, um, let's say a city has a municipal bond outstanding, matures in, let's say, 10 years, in 2031, 2032. It's paying a 5% coupon. The city pays it off. Well, now, because interest rates are so low, uh, much lower than probably when they issued that bond 10 years prior, now they get to issue another bond uh, for, let's say, a 3% coupon. So the person it's great for the city because they're paying less in interest. Sure. But for the person receiving that those coupon payments, instead of receiving a 5% coupon, they're only receiving a 3% coupon. So it um it will eat away at their interest income. Okay. So that that's a collateral impact for the the investor who's invested in municipal bonds of some of this infrastructure spending and uh, to the extent that that allows the municipality to refinance their debt. Exactly. Okay. So let's talk for a minute also about the potential impact of tax increases. Of course, it's not happened yet. There's a lot of conversation around how do we pay the bills, right? When you spend money, eventually you've got to do something to um, you know, pay that debt that is due and it can't continue to expand. So there's a lot of talk around tax increases. So uh, as tax increases are discussed and or they happen, people start to focus a little bit more on well, where can I get tax-free income? How can I reduce my tax you know, burden? And so then for those people that are investing in bonds or more conservative type investments, they naturally are going to pay more attention to the municipal bonds because of their being not generally subject to federal taxes as well as state, local, all of that. So where are we going with that? Is there a couple of things we should maybe point out about the impact or the consequences of looking at that in this environment? Well, I would say there are kind of two camps. Um, unless an individual or a couple um, are in the higher tax brackets, right. it really doesn't make sense to put your money into municipal bonds just from a tax perspective. Uh, perspective, even though they are exempt from federal and sometimes local and state taxation. Um, but from a portfolio perspective, um, portfolio management perspective, sometimes it would make sense to diversify into municipal bonds, just like we do with emerging market bonds, corporate bonds, high yield, which are the non-investment grade bonds. Right, right. So sometimes from a portfolio standpoint, it might make sense to okay. diversify further into the municipal bond market. But just because, let's say, taxes do go up or are increased in, in a certain areas, that doesn't mean you should ditch all your other fixed income right, securities and right. go all into municipal bonds. Yeah. Yeah. You're, for somebody to really benefit from a tax standpoint, and what we're really talking about is the after-tax yield to the investor, Correct. what you earn in net interest after paying tax, you, for most people, and I'll say this as a good general comment, most people can be better off buying the corporate bonds or whatever the case may be through their mutual funds or individual corporate bonds and pay the tax on that interest, they'll come out ahead of what they would have earned on a municipal bond that didn't have to pay tax on. Correct. And so that's uh, the difference. But I liked, your, I liked your point about the diversification. You might include municipal bonds just as part of another diversification. Um, and we still don't know what's going to happen with taxes, so all this has yet to play out. Um, any other final thoughts about municipal bonds if somebody wants to consider them 
as part of their overall portfolio. Um, there's a misconception out there that municipal bonds are kind of bulletproof. They're, hey, you know, they're backed by a municipality or whatever. But remember, uh, Detroit, eight years ago, 2013, municipalities, cities, entire counties um, can file bankruptcy. Right. Uh, and just a quick um, uh, stat that I, I read that an unsecured uh, municipal bond in Detroit got 34 cents on the dollar and a secured municipal bond in the same Detroit bankruptcy, um, this was secured by property taxes, um, got 74 cents on the dollar. So municipalities um, can declare bankruptcy and the bondholders will get a steep haircut. Yeah, the bankruptcy is going to allow the, the, the municipality to renegotiate and come up with some sort of partial payment to avoid having to fulfill the, the full obligation of that. Exactly. Okay, so full faith and credit, mm, not quite... <laughs> Fully. <laughs> All right. Very good, Robert. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back to you to help you plan stronger with a future installment of Plan Stronger.